What's up guys, welcome back. So now that I got that new C2 cap, I was spraying that gun and I was noticing how it sprays different with different velocity it clears. So the medium solids, the high solids, and uh, I wanted to go over that with you guys on what's the best clear for you guys at home and even when you're doing a job in a booth. So through the years I've sprayed cars out of booths, in booths, and I've always got different clears for each situation. That way I was set up with the right uh, clear and the right thing for the job. That way I could have the best uh, looking job and have the best results because each clear has got a different uh, thickness, different solids, and uh, they'll work better for you in different climates and different uh, atmospheres. So when you're spraying a job outside or in a garage without airflow, and you don't wanna have that thing open too long because the longer that thing stays wet, the longer you're gonna have stuff landing in that job. So you wanna have something that snaps quick. So I was gonna to talk to you guys on that today and also on how to set your guns up to spray different products through them. The thicker they are and the thinner they are. So we're gonna be spraying a truck bed so stay tuned as we talk about these different clears and different gun settings and spray this job, guys. All right, guys, so I'm in the mixing room and I wanted to show you the clears that I use depending on the job size because I'm not dealing with uh, different temperatures as much as you guys are without heat. I have heat in my booth. So when you guys are spraying a job outside in a, in a garage, you guys don't have any way of controlling the temperature. So you got to base it on your clears and your different reducers and hardeners to speed you up or slow you down based on whether it's hot or cold out so I'm used to that I've done that for years spraying stuff out in the middle of a shop or a garage with no booth at home when I was starting out in this but now that I have a controlled environment I'm not really too critical on what I use because I'm able to adjust the temperature and do it like that so I thought this may be beneficial to you guys to see how I do it and that might help you guys to get the right product when you're doing a job and you really can't change your uh, temperature so these are the two, these are the three clears that I use on a day to day. So this here is a spot clear. It's air dry and it air dries in about 20 minutes. Then I have my CC 200 that I really like a lot that I use mainly all the time. And then I also have this CC 950, which is more of a higher solid, it's a slower clear. But they're, they're great clears. It's just picking the one you want to use for each job. And that's the same thing how you guys want to do it. So this is a medium solids. This clear here kicks fast, has a beautiful gloss, and I can buff it as soon as it comes out of the booth. So this is my go-to clear. And I recommend a clear like this for guys out there spraying at home. Something that looks nice, has a beautiful gloss, but also kicks that way you don't have any bugs landing in it and you have less problems with dirt. You wouldn't want to get a slow clear like this that's going to stay open longer, especially without baking it. So definitely want to you know pick the right clear and this goes for solvent water base or whatever you're spraying underneath this uh, clear so I'm gonna show you today how when I noticed when I got that C2 cap when I turn the pressure down because it breaks it's, it's putting out a bigger droplet I can turn the pressure down with the gun with the CC 200 being a medium solids clear and it actually lays out slicker turning the air pressure down than turning it up and I know a lot of guys think that it's the opposite but when you have a quick clear it doesn't flow out like a slow clear would so you got to base it on how it's going on that panel is how it's going to look so when you turn the pressure down you can get a slicker finish with it because it's putting a bigger droplet on there which is it's slowing it down a little bit and it's not letting it snap as fast which is flowing it out more so I'm going to spray this truck bed and I'm going to show you what I mean I'm going to spray this one at 18 psi with the c2 cap and I'll show you what I mean on how you could lay it out by less pressure so a lot of that has to do with the clear thickness how fast it kicks and all those things are variables in how this job's going to come out so you know they make these guns now for high solids clears a lot of times and I know a lot of you guys at home they're not using a real true high solids clear so I'm going to show you how to turn down the pressure get a slicker finish and not have to uh, try as hard to put it on and wonder why it's pinching up on you because your clear is kicking fast so you put it on slower which puts it on wetter and gives you a slicker finish so let me show you how that works when I get to that We're gonna hit it with 
bass. We're using the 3M gun. I went to the 1.4s now. I'm trying out those now. I like the way they work. They put down more paint and you can move quicker with them. So I'm liking the 1.4s. I just got those the other days. You guys seen it. So we're going to go ahead and base this out real quick. And uh, we're going to go right to the clear. And I'll show you what I mean about making sure you use the right clear and the way you can dial in your gun. So stay tuned. I'm going to base this one out, guys. And we'll be banging this one out with clear. All right, guys, the whole job is based out now and we're gonna get ready for the clear. So, wanted to show it to you guys before we clear it and talk to you a minute about the clear that I was telling you guys about earlier. So, I like to use a medium solids clear because it's fast, but it still has a good gloss and still has a good build. So, it's a premium clear we're using here is the Sherwin-Williams CC200. And I love this clear because it's like you guys would want to use something that would get on there nice and smooth and fast and set up that way in case you're spraying something not in a booth, it'll set up quick enough to where you don't have to worry about ruining the paint job with bugs or anything else landing in it because you don't want to leave that job open for long. And I don't want to have to wait too long for my stuff to dry either. So when I bake it for 25 minutes at 150 degrees, I can pull this stuff out and buff it immediately. So. When you guys are getting clears at home and you guys are wanting to paint something, make sure you check into the clear you're buying. You know, they have names like Glamour Clear and, uh, you know, High Solids Clears and all these custom clear names that sound good, but those are designed for paint booths that you're going to be able to have the uh, environment controlled because it's going to be taking a long time for that stuff to set up and you don't want that clear. So you want to get something that's nice, that has a good solids count, but you also want to have something that'll kick quick. And uh, so I'm going to show you guys here what I was telling you about, you know, these new guns, they're, they're really well made and they break these clears up so well. So sometimes you don't have to go by the manufacturer's recommendations with these, you know, PSI settings. So, you know, get your clears, try them out. So this clear, I was telling you, the CC200 is a medium solid. So I've been spraying this clear with the C2 cap now at 18 PSI with the DV1 and it lays down a beautiful finish. So I only give it about a three minute flash time. By the time I go around, I'll come back around and clear it again. So you don't wanna put that on there so hard that it's actually making orange peel and it's breaking it up too thin to where it's not gonna have the best look. So I'm spraying this clear now at 18 PSI and it puts down a nice thicker coat that looks phenomenal. So you guys will see what I mean. You don't need to turn these guns way up thinking you're gonna get a, a slicker finish. Do a couple test panels, see what you get. Try, don't keep turning it up. Try turning it down and see how good it works. So watch how this comes out at 18 PSI, guys. So that's one coat of clear. And like I was telling you guys before, they make these guns so good now, they atomize up these clears really well. It's not like back in the old days where you had to turn these guns up to 35 PSI to get it to spray. So they're really well made now. So when you guys are spraying these clears, you know, guys at the, in the shops know, you know, test them out because humidity makes a difference. You know, if it's hot or cold outside makes a difference, the hardener makes a difference, the reducer makes a difference. But a lot of you guys at home aren't using reducer in your clears. You're using like a four to one clear or a two to one. And you don't have really the advantages of cocktailing your clears and getting the most out of them, you know what I mean? So you're set to the hardener and the clear. So make sure you get something that you can get around the car with that don't set up too quick 
but don't get something that stays open too long and it's gonna get a you know attract a lot of dirt so I just thought I'd do this video on you know different things I try all things out when I'm spraying I don't stick to one thing because these guys that are making these guns and the guys that are making these clears they're not using them every day like we are so I test it out the way they say and then I try to adjust to see if it works better my way so you know don't be afraid to try things out and uh, you know, when I'm using a higher solids clears, I definitely turn the clear up more, you know, the air pressure up more to press that clear up. But with these thinner clears, when you turn that pressure up, all you're doing is wasting it in the air and you're not putting any on the panel because it's breaking it up so fine and the clear is so thin, you're losing a lot of it. So let's put another coat on and see what this looks like at 18 PSI with the C2 cap, guys. Check that out. It's got a bigger peel, but a flatter peel. And that's more like the GM cars are. They have a bigger peel that's uh, not as tight knit. So I like the way that 18 PSI does for the uh, GM trucks and cars. But look how nice that lays it down at 18 PSI. So. I like the way it works. It puts down a, a, a thicker coat because you're not breaking it up so fine, but it has that bigger peel look that it needs to have for the uh, GM. So it works well at 22. I just think you're wasting more product because you're breaking it up too fine and you're losing it in the air. So this came out really nice and clean again. So don't be afraid to try things out guys. And when you're getting clear for the house, Go for the medium solids. That way you got something that kicks quick but still looks good. And also check into some spot clears because they air dry in 20 minutes. So if you're doing something small and you want to get through it quick and you don't want to have bugs land in it, go for a spot clear. But uh, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you're in for that 5500 giveaway I'm giving on that Sada gun. If you're new to the channel, go back to the other gun video and you'll see me talking about it. So thanks for watching guys and see you on the next one.